Right, so how many of you actually like computers? Oh, wow. Oh, I, you notice I haven't put my hand up. <laughs> I'm a computer programmer, a technologist. That's my, my professional career. I don't think computers are actually the thing that's important. It's, they're part of this revolution, this crazy revolution we're going through, making all these devices everyone has and making us do all things in different ways and enabling us to do different things. And it's the kind of revolution that's happened before. The printing press was like a similar revolution. And it took hundreds of years for the social consequences of the printing press to fully come through. Like there are these very basic concepts we now have single words for. So for example, library. So before the printing press, the whole idea of a library, we meet, you know, the idea of a library that you go and borrow a book from everywhere in every, every, uh, every town was, would be insane, it would be meaningless. So it took a long time to develop that concept that the library was needed to make the printing press valuable for everyone. And it's the same with words, a word like literacy. Again, the idea of universal literacy, we should teach everyone to read and write. Not really credible before the printing press, but it took centuries before it happened. And, and another one is copyright. We all know what the word copyright means, but it had to be invented. And we're really at the stage with computers where no one knows how it'll end up, no one knows how they'll be used. It's very confusing, it's very messy. And I kind of don't like that. But what I do like is um, making people's experiences of the world better, making it easier to do things for people. Um, and I like communities. And computers and the internet open up opportunities to do those two things. And that's what it's really about. It's not about bits and bytes and websites and tablets and PCs and all that nonsense. What it's really about is making people's experience of the world when they want to do something, making it easy as you can for them to do it, not harder, easier. If it makes it harder, you can carry on using paper. Um, and it's about making it so that you can form new kinds of community that you couldn't before. And it's not a radical change to the community thing, but because the internet lets anyone connect quickly, you can form communities you otherwise couldn't have ever formed. And in 50 years' time, the fact that there's this, is, that is new technology, no one will notice. Young people born now don't think this is new technology. So I would, like, if you're thinking about tech, get out of your heads that it's new tech. It's confusing because it's new. We don't know how to use it because it's new. But the thing that really matters is that it's um, something you can use to improve people's experiences, whether they're patients, whether they're employees, whether they're whoever they are, whether they're just random members of the public who've got, like, a problem. I'm going to give a couple of examples of things I've made in the past. So I um, helped start a charity called My Society that made a couple of the websites that Nicola mentioned, like They Work For You. Uh, the two I'm going to talk about are, the first one's Fix My Street. Have any of you used Fix My Street? I know you probably have. <laughs> a few of you. Yeah, it's not particularly well known. We haven't marketed it well enough, but it's, it's got hundreds of thousands of reports on it. So Fix My Street we made about 10 years ago, and it makes it easier to report uh, things to councils like potholes, abandoned cars, like things in the street that you would report that are wrong. And it wasn't like a necessary thing. The councils already had phone lines you could ring up. They already had uh, websites that you could find and find out who to email the problem to. But what they didn't have was a very simple interface that for somebody who didn't care about government, didn't know about councils, just wanted to report like uh, some vandalism on a, on a, outside their house, an easy way for them to do it. And it wraps all the councils in the whole country, so you don't have to know what council you're in. You just need to know a postcode or a street address, and you type it in. You go to fixmystreet.com or install the apps. Uh, go to, and then type in your address or, and take a photo if you can even nowadays on a phone um, and type in the report and it gets sent to the right place at the council and you get told back. What, what, it, it's, it's then a published public report so you can see if anyone else has reported it so you don't have to duplicate it. So when I said this makes it easier, it makes it easier for the person reporting because they can report without having to understand the business of government. No one cares about how government's structured, honestly. Like most people really don't. They, if they have to know about it, that's a failure. Um, and secondly, it actually helps the councils as well, because they get nicely formatted reports with a map, uh, and they don't get duplicate reports. It like, makes it easier for the person who's having to deal with, with the problem. Um, and it's a, it's a very simple example, but it's the kind of thing, if there are like big radical changes with technology, that kind of simple change, which is, is really important. Um, and it has an impact. It has an impact of letting, and then councillors will then look at the site to see which things have been reported that aren't being fixed and try and improve the process. So it gives a, a feedback loop um, to, to that system. The other example I'm going to give is called, uh, what do they know? Have any of you made a freedom of information request ever? Have any of you received one? Which is perhaps more likely. <laughs> Fucking pain, aren't they? Sorry. Uh, I encourage people to make them. Um, the reason I encourage it and like them is because I think government's unique because government can be open about what it does. Like inside companies, they're all secretive and competing and 
oh, it's, just, it's just horrible. Um, whereas government can talk about what it does in public, and it's much cheaper. The reason it's better to do things in public is because it's cheaper. Like, you don't have to worry about who has access. As soon as you make something private, you have to decide who can access it, and you have to have lists of people who can access it, and you have to worry about security. It's a real pain. Whereas if you just publish something, uh, anyone else in bits of government who needs it, or in the public who needs it, or anywhere who needs it, can access it without even to think about it. And it, it increases the, the value. So what we did uh, with What Do They Know is made it so that you could file a Freedom of Information request to any government agency. Um, on, just go to whatdotheyknow.com, and it leads you through doing it. And then it gets published, and more importantly, any response gets published. So all the documents that get sent back just get put on the internet. And the reason that matters is because then other people can use them. So they, again, they don't have to file duplicate requests. And again, um, they can just find them with Google. Um, one of the really important things about the web and use a bit like making it easy to use the web is that everything comes from search, really. People just type. If you think about yourself, if you want to do something you don't know anything about, the first thing you do is search for something. And how people find it by search is really important. And what do they know now is a massive trove of documents about government. And people find all sorts of crazy bits of information by accident on what do they know, not intentionally particularly by us, just because they search for a term in the document. And that quickly gets them to that document without having to work out which government department has it and find the right person to ring it up. It makes it just more accessible. Um, at breakfast this morning with a few friends, I decided, I asked them, uh, if your parents suddenly, they're kind of my kind of age, I'm nearly 40, I know, don't quite look it, but I am. Um, and my mum's in her early 70s, and she's well now, and I hope she'll be well for another 20 years. But at some point, something will happen where she won't be able to look after herself anymore. And it's like, what would I do if, she, if I just got a phone call? And it's like, wait, and I haven't, we hadn't planned it, we maybe should have planned it. And I, was, I asked them, well, what would you search for? Like, what would you Google for? And um, they said, I'm just going to say, say this, I'm, I'm saying this because this kind of detail is the stuff that really matters. Like, actually, it's the individual's experience that matters, not some grand vision or some grand piece. So I, I, my instinct was just to search for the word care home. My friend David was going to search for care home chapel on the frith, so being more specific. <laughs> um, Ian, interestingly, is much more forward thinking. He searched for retirement home. I hadn't really thought about the difference between the two, but the difference is that's something you buy sooner, like planning more of what's going to happen with your retirement. So he was like, I'd try and get them in a retirement home before that became a problem. Zarino searched, was, said care home, and then he immediately said, actually, I wouldn't search for care home because I get loads of crap that wouldn't actually help me. I get people spamming it. I get bad advice. I'm going to search for care home citizens advice bureau, which turns out to be a really good thing to search for because it, it be, has a tiny little page on citizens advice bureau site that says go to age UK, which have lovely loads of documents, really good information about, like, about how care homes work. Um, and, and then at the end, Ian goes, oh, I'd then search for Care Quality Commission, because he's a bit of a kind of government data nerd and he had heard of the Care Quality Commission, which is actually a fantastic site, the Care Quality Commission. It's got ratings, so you can see if there's like, you know, you can see the inspections about the homes and see if they're actually any good. But it doesn't come up. If you just search for Care Home, it doesn't come up on the Google search. You get carehome.co.uk, which is a nice site, but it's not quite. It could be better. And that kind of thinking about user, they're called user journeys. There's this stuff, agile software development and user stories. You'll hear lots of buzz phrases. But understanding what a person does who's in a circumstance, what they type into a computer, what they ask their friends, where they phone up, what they look at in directions, it, that detail just is really powerful because it affects, it, it can make someone in a vulnerable and a difficult position much better off if they can get the information they need easily, find the right service easily, like do, do, every, do everything easily. So. That's, um, that's kind of what I worry about. <laughs> and in the end, I, yeah, I want these phones and things to automatically sort this out for us. I want everything sorted out. But what's really enabling is the, the computers and the instant communications. They'll enable all sorts of other things we haven't even dreamt of yet, new ways of structuring services. So um, in particular, I'm talking I'm obviously retirement's on my head for some reason at the moment, so I'm going to use that example again. But it really, it, it worries me that we're going to have lots of old, we, we will have lots of old people, I'll be one of them, I hope. And we haven't got enough resources as a society to pay enough money to care for. We need a better system than going, we'll pretend we can be independent until we're not anymore, and then not being able to afford good enough care. So what's the better system? That's a really hard question. But part of the answer, not the whole answer, but the new technology will enable new aspects of answers to that question. Um, even in tiny, in tiny ways, and how those are used and the detail of that is really important. So, yeah, so my advice, imagine it's in 50 years' time and all the text just normal. What's it going to do that's amazing is the, the real question. Right, I'm going to stop. <laughs>
I'll take questions if you want, but I don't know if you've got time. Um, I'm a bit late, I'm just we have questions at this point, but we, we have got, we're a bit early in the, in the schedule, and we have got time for just a quick, couple of quick questions if anybody wants to ask a question. Ah, okay. <laughs> Oh. Where is your mind taking you? <laughs> uh, is it, you know, we're going to be taking you in the kind of care um, of the Yeah, I want, uh, I'll take the microphone back and answer. <laughs> um, I, I mentioned that computers are a bit scary. They are. Uh, we don't know how to, like, police them and control them. All the stuff like the NSA spying on everyone, criminals getting access to stuff when they use it. That stuff's all pretty horrible and scary. I don't really like it. It's like I'm in a big metropolis now when 20 years ago the internet was this fun, friendly village where you could leave your doors unlocked. Um, one of the things I'm thinking about a lot is what I call decentralization. So the power, or power on the internet is getting very centralized. And Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon are controlling. Like it's getting very corporatized and increasing its fewer and fewer companies. And this actually really matters because it controls your information and your life increasingly. Um, so I've got a project called Redecentralize, which is about trying to make the internet more uh, distributed again. So in smaller organizations can have more power on it again in different ways. Um, so yeah, a bit of a big answer, but yeah. <laughs> okay, we need to have a short question right. to follow a big answer. Does anybody else want to ask a question? No? Well, okay, no, well, thank you once again, Francis. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right, thank you.